By 1994, the North American console wars were relentless. Nintendo and Sega ruthlessly competed for dominance over the video game market. And it was very close. One market analyst said, we would put Nintendo and Sega about dead even. But in Japan, it was a different story. Nintendo had a sizable lead over Sega, and one reason was their impressive array of role-playing games. Role-playing games were extremely popular in Japan. Enix's Dragon Quest series made national headlines when kids skipped school to stand in line and buy Dragon Quest III. Nintendo had an all-star list of RPG franchises, including Final Fantasy, Dragon Quest, the Mana series, Breath of Fire, and more. Sega had a few notable RPG titles, like Fantasy Star and the Shining series, but their selection paled in comparison to Nintendo's offerings. Sega had to turn things around. So in 1994, they announced the Mega Role-Playing Project. They planned to launch seven RPG titles in 10 months for the Mega Drive and its add-on, the Mega CD. On the cover of each game would be a gold Mega Role-Playing Project emblem. And the first game to launch under the project was one of their best. It was called Shin Soseki Ragnacenti, an action RPG that had a strong resemblance to Nintendo's popular Legend of Zelda series. Ragnacenti was developed by Nextech, a studio co-founded by Sega in 1992. But the game's origins can be traced to a company called Gao Entertainment. Gao Entertainment's first game was Ranger X, an excellent shoot-'em-up on the Genesis. Ragnacenti was only their second title. In April of 1994, Nextech acquired Gao Entertainment, which gave them additional resources and support from Sega. Two months later, on June 17, 1994, Shin Soseki Ragnacenti was released in Japan. The game begins with a brief cutscene. A long time ago, the world was filled with darkness and inhabited by monsters. But then one day the world became full of light, which sent the monsters into hiding. Humans continued to thrive and evolve in the light. Eventually, monsters began reappearing. Players took control of Corona, a 14-year-old boy from the town of Soleil. On his birthday, Corona inherits his father's sword and shield and sets off to explore the world and figure out why monsters are suddenly reappearing. Ragnacenti looks like a clone of The Legend of Zelda. The main character is a boy with a funny hat. You can change the main character's name. The game has a top-down view. You can cut grass. Instead of a life bar of hearts, it's apples. Link fires a sword beam while Corona literally throws his sword. But Ragnacenti had its own unique features too. Corona moves in eight different directions instead of the usual four. He jumps which adds platforming to some of the game's dungeons. Ragnacenti's best feature is the animal companion system. In the game, Corona gains the ability to speak to animals, but loses the ability to speak with humans. This means he has to recruit animals to help him save the world. He can equip two animals at a time, and each one gives him a special ability. Flash the cheetah lets Corona move faster. Dippy the dinosaur lets him traverse rough terrain. Chili the Penguin gives Corona's sword an ice attack. It's cool to try different combinations of animals to see how their abilities work together. Corona begins the game with almost no abilities. Even basic skills like jumping have to be discovered. According to the developers, this was intentional. Producer Yayoi Onda stated that there aren't any experience points since this is an action RPG, but we knew that people would still want to be able to develop their characters. That's why we made it so that jumping and sword swinging are things that are learned throughout your journey, to give it that sense of growth. Graphically, the game is gorgeous. Ragnacenti's use of color is impressive and rivals some Super Nintendo games. The sprite work is really well done, especially on some of the boss enemies. There are also little details that stand out, like footprints when Corona walks in the sand. With all of the comparisons to Zelda, you would think Ragnacenti would have an open world to explore, but it actually utilizes an overworld map. Graphic designer Toshio Yamamoto claimed the map was the hardest part of making the game. I drew all of the terrain beforehand and had to decide which parts the characters couldn't be in. It felt like putting together a puzzle. 
Ragnacenti mostly sticks to a linear narrative, so there isn't much exploring. There aren't any difficult puzzles to solve, and most players won't have any problem finishing the game. There is some backtracking, but everything is easy to get to thanks to the map. Sega wanted an easy-to-play action RPG, and Ragnacenti delivered. It was a game Mega Drive owners had been waiting for. Japanese publication Beep Mega Drive declared, Your plans for summer vacation are here. Right away, magazines around the world showed previews of the game. Electronic Gaming Monthly wrote, With a huge world of swords and sorcery, it's a mystical story to explore in the classic Zelda style. This is the kind of game the Mega Drive has needed for a long time. Let's hope Sega will bring it out here. Which was a good question. Would Sega bring Ragnacenti to North America? Japanese role-playing games had not taken North America by storm, but were gaining popularity. The Super Nintendo in particular was in a heyday of RPGs. The Sega Genesis, on the other hand, had established itself as a console for cool kids and older gamers. It was filled with action games and sports titles. But Sega did release Ragnacenti in Europe under the name Soleil in January of 1995. If Europe got a release, why not North America? Ultimately, a decision had to be made. Sega of America liked Ragnacenti, but there was another game from the Mega Roleplaying Project that stood out. The Story of Thor. Developed by Ancient, the team behind the Streets of Rage series, it was a cross between a beat-em-up and an RPG. In the end, Sega of America chose The Story of Thor. They renamed it Beyond Oasis and published it in March of 1995. That left Ragnacenti without a North American publisher. Luckily, Atlas Software saved the day. Atlas Software was the US subsidiary of Atlas, a video game developer in Japan. Originally, Atlas Software localized their own games for the North American market, but they also found business localizing obscure games from other companies. Atlas Software tended to make games in limited quantities, which made sense considering the risk involved. They saw potential in Ragnacenti and agreed to publish the game in North America, but the name had to be changed. Shin Soseki Ragnacenti became Crusader of Senti. Atlas Software published Crusader of Senti in March of 1995 at a retail price of $69.99. It was an interesting time to release a game on the Genesis. The video game industry was transitioning to a new generation of 32-bit consoles, like the Sony PlayStation. Sega's new console, the Sega Saturn, took the retail world by surprise just two months after Crusader of Senti came out. Plus, they were pushing their 32X add-on for the Genesis. It was a mess, but also a clear sign that the industry was ready to move on from the 16-bit era. Judging by the value of the game today, it's fair to assume Crusader of Senti didn't sell a lot of copies, but critics overwhelmingly loved the game. Video Games The Ultimate Magazine said, Fans of The Legend of Zelda will be pleased to make the acquaintance of Crusader of Senti, a remarkable Zelda clone that pays off big in the playability and value departments. The Genesis needs more games like this. Next Tech would go on to make a sort of spiritual successor to Crusader of Senti called Linkle Liver Story on the Sega Saturn, but they never fully revisited the game. In 1997, Sega bought out Next Tech. They continued to develop their own titles as well as assisting other companies. By 2003, Next Tech became an independent studio and renamed themselves Nex Entertainment. But in 2016, the company officially dissolved. Ultimately, the Mega Roleplaying Project didn't convince RPG fans to abandon their Super Nintendos. Some of the titles were just ports of games released on other consoles. But there were some really good original titles as well. Crusader of Senti is one of them. It's pretty rare to find an action RPG on the Genesis, let alone one this good. And it's not only a rare type of game, it's just a rare game, period. Crusader of Senti is one of the most expensive cartridges for the Sega Genesis, and it hasn't been re-released in any official capacity. At this point, emulation is the best option. Definitely give Crusader of Senti a try. 
even if it is just Zelda on the Genesis. Funding for Gaming Historian is provided in part by supporters on Patreon. Thank you.